hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Resilience Talk with Brad Newfeld. This is the show where you will discover that every challenge that you face in life is conquerable, especially when we work together. Well, this man I'm about to introduce to you needs no introduction. This is Mr. Andy LaRusso, the singing chef. And if you've watched ever watched any of the Food Network or any of the cooking channels, you ca- you can't miss him. <laughs> he's he's there. Plus, he's all over the world, and I'm so excited. Actually, Andy, uh, Andy, and I met a number of years ago. We were just discussing this prior to the show, uh, and it's been a while because, as my as you know, my audience, I uh, had brain surgery and I've been out of the picture for a while. But we were just reminiscing on the past and trying to figure out how exactly we met, but. It's we've got a lot to talk about today, Andy. Go ahead, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what's your life like growing up as Andy LaRusso, and uh, how did you become the singing chef? Well, Brad, it's so good to re see you again and to know that you're on the mend and healing well and sharing and doing still doing your work that you're meant to yes, do. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank <And> you. <laughs> that's that's the bottom line, but you know, coming from a small town in Newark, New Jersey, um. Mm-hmm. Being raised really very, very close to my Italian-American family, Uh, my grandma on my mom's side, my nonna, was from Sicily, a little town called Provenza di Anna, E-N-N-A, which is in the western coast, pretty much south of Terramina, which a lot of people like to visit in Sicily. Mm -hmm. Have you been to Italy at all? No, I haven't. I, as a matter yeah. of fact, that's my next uh, That's my next year's oh, venture. Man. We're going to Europe. I'll I've been to Asia, a lot of countries in Asia, but not in, yeah, not over but there, but we're heading there. My grandmom came at a very young age. My granddad, her husband, not at the time, but her boyfriend at the time, or um, her significant other, whatever, was working in the mines in West Virginia. Coal he mines, had, yeah. He had been sponsored uh, by someone as back then you had to be sponsored to come into America, go through Ellis Island. Mm -hmm. And after working in the mines in West Virginia, he decided to send for his sweetheart, my grandma, Grace. Scardilli was her last name and, uh, Colombrito was her married name. And they stayed and they worked, they got married, uh, to my knowledge in that area, uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, I believe, where the coal mines Mm -hmm. are. Uh, They got married. uh, They had, you know, a a small wedding, I guess, and friends. And a couple bottles of wine later, six kids. (laughs) Yeah. Is that how it works? (laughs) I guess so. I don't know. But my mom was born there. My mom, Aida, Aida. Mm -hmm. And I believe her sister, my Auntie Rose, which was the oldest of the sisters, Then they moved to New Jersey and they lived in the ironbound section of New Jersey, which now is a foodie section. It's more of a Portuguese, uh, to my last recollection, Portuguese uh, area where they have delicious foods, but I haven't been back there. So they moved there. Then my dad, my dad's grandfather, Angelo, (laughs) nice he came over uh gosh i don't know how old he was you know 16 18 in that age believe he came over with one of his brothers but he left a sister and another brother i talk about this in my second cookbook um back in potenza potenza is an area north of uh, um, Sicily, of course, uh, uh, in a region north of Calabria, which is down in the southern boot, as you're moving up, uh, Basilicata right. is the area, and there's a small town called Potenza, which is a hilly region of the area, where my grandfather, Angelo, grew up on a farm, and he came here at a very young age. And uh, moved to, I believe, New Jersey. And I guess he also had a sponsor and he lived in a boarding house, I believe. Mm. And um, humble beginnings for sure. Yeah. And but his mother, his meeting his wife, my grandmother, Mary, who died at a very young age when I was very young. And then um, 
granddad actually moved in with us after his wife, my grandmother Mary passed. And he would tell me stories on how he grew up in a farm, on a farm in Potenza, lots of sheep because it was hilly. It didn't necessarily, mm -hmm. that my recollection didn't have cows, it had sheep, mm -hmm. uh, you know, goats, uh, chickens. Uh, and he would work on the farm and do all whatever was needed, the chores. And they would all sit down and have a nice meal together, of course, at the end of the day. Of course, they made their own vino. Mm -hmm. which he continued to do, especially my grandpa uh, on my uh, mom's side. He had the still in the basement, you know, with the grapes, actually stomping the grapes with the old mm -hmm. press, the old wine press. And um, so the family itself was very deeply rooted since I'm second generation in that tradition. Then my dad, of course, uh, was born there in the Ironbound section. And funnily enough, Brad, Somehow, I don't get, I didn't get the exact GPS on this or story, mm -hmm. but my dad's family, the LaRusso family, somehow lived either on the same block or right across the street from my mom's family. No the way. Colorado family. No way. Can you imagine that? <laughs> right across the street in the mm -hmm. Ironbound section of Newark, New Jersey. My uncles would tell me the story and my uncle would tell me the story. My dad never really was too. My dad was a disabled vet. God bless mm -hmm. him. He mm -hmm. came home with a purple heart. He worked very hard. He was taken care of by the Veterans Administration. And they took care of him, although he, he rejected a lot of stuff. My dad was a real, you know, he was a real bull. Now, I tell you, he was he was a tourist, by the way. Oh, nice. But uh, he came over and, you know, he... Um, he worked, studied, worked hard for us and, and, and took care of us while, even while, with his uh, disability. But uh, uh, so they lived across from each other in the houses. And my one of my uncles told me the story after dad passed. Uh, well, you know, before the war, of course, hmm. I believe it was in Korea. He was in the army, my dad. OK. And how he used to go either go down the block or cross the street. Right. Hmm. And. He had my dad was like he he was like an easy rider motorcycle guy. <laughs> nice, he nice. Must have had one of the old Indian. So you know, that's where you got your rebel side from. Well, I guess yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> and he would pick up my mother's sister uh, sisters, maybe plural, and then my mom, and take her for a ride on the motorcycle. And then you know they were started the court courting and. Uh, and then they moved, they got, you know, they got married very, I still have those beautiful pictures of them mm. at their wedding, you know, those classic sepia tone brown photos that, are yeah. that you know, nice. And um, they moved to uh, uh, Newark, New Jersey. They moved up to Newark, New Jersey, Valesburg, uh, where I was born in Newark, New Jersey in the hospital there. But my, my influence and in that, you know, pretty much, you know, as I grew up, uh mom my mom ida would be the connector of both the larusso family and the colombrito family okay. in that you know wherever the opportunity or whenever the opportunity to arise would arise and she didn't drive till she was 40 and i'll tell you that story okay my father didn't want her to drive mm. but um she um always would take a bus and sometimes I would be with her. Most of the times I would be with her and she would take a bus to either my aunt Beatrice LaRusso's house uh, before my cousins were born or my, her mother's house, Colombrito's house. And we would always have Sunday dinners or Wednesday pasta day nights. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course the Christmas, the holiday seasons, especially in my, mom's side, my grandmother, Grace, and my mom and her three sisters did a lot of the work and pretty much the influence of my first cookbook, Sing and Cook with Andy LaRusso, that came Great with book. audio cassette tape. Yes. That's, that was the inspiration to my first cookbook, which was published, self-published in 1991. It's mm -hmm. out of print now, but... <laughs> I still have Last my copy. Huh? <laughs> I still have my copy. Oh boy, I wish I could see it. I think I probably <laughs> autographed it, but somebody yes, found did. it on Amazon. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was probably signed or something, but uh, they were so happy to find the original version. And one of the first, it had been printed in three editions, but that had the recipes to what I hope to have is some of my grandma's cooking, uh, mm -hmm. cookies from Sicily and cakes. Yes. And what she would do. Because, you know, when the Italians came here and they, they tried to bring some of the ingredients or get some of the ingredients that they had in Italy, which they didn't really have here in the United States. So they adapted some of the recipes. Uh, for example, uh, and I have all these up on my website, singing, okay. most of them, singingchef.com. Singingchef.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the eggplant parmesan really is an Italian American creation, especially, would you believe it? Spaghetti and meatballs is also. Really? But yeah. Yeah. It's really, of course, it's, you know, spread worldwide, but it, it was yes. really embellished by the Italian Americans. Okay. Uh, from what I was taught mm -hmm. over the years and doing research on my first cookbook. Mm -hmm. And so she was the one that really, along with my Auntie Rose, made some of the cookies, which I put in that first cookbook, Sing and Cook with Andy LaRusso, self-published. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And she would always have potentially, when she was cooking, well, of course, at that time, there was... Enrico Caruso, Mario Lanza. Remember Mario Lanza, Brad? I don't. I don't. He Mario Lanza was very, very popular in Hollywood, I believe, in the 50s or the 60s. Okay, okay, he okay. Actually, he actually played in a movie. Yes. Enrico Caruso. Mm. And he was, I mean, he was a fabulous singer. Absolutely mm. fabulous singer. And she would have music, this Italian music playing uh, when she was cooking, because the influence of the mood, as you know, when we cook and when we eat, it's best to eat in a happy mood. It's best <laughs> to eat in a mood where we're not upset, because as you know, we get yeah. what's called an, an Italian slang, agita or heartburn. Okay, uh, say that two, <laughs> 10 times fast. <laughs> <laughs> right. But to sit down in a relaxed mood, to put some music on, and if you love wine, I like, I love Italian red wine, and you're with your family, it's really wonderful to have that. And that's one of the reasons why and how the inspiration came to write my first cookbook with the music, to have the family get together again and sit down and eat and enjoy each other. So that really kick-started, uh, in one sense, my publishing Okay. Uh, the first cookbook and my inspiration, you know, mm. for the first cookbook. So that all goes right back to the beginning, circles right back to being raised in that Italian American family and growing up uh, with both of my grandparents uh, alive. That really was yeah. a big inspiration to me. Fantastic. So was it around this time that that's when you decided, you know what, I want to be I want to write this book. I want to be out there to share. What was the message that drove you? That I want to share these recipes, that I want to share with the world my talent of music. What uh, what was it that started the whole, uh, your singing chef? Well, I was living, Brad, at that time uh, when I first had the epiphany to do the cookbook in, in uh, California. I was okay. living in Ojai, California. Okay. And... Um, I was cycling up in the mountains uh, of Ojai where there are a lot of uh, sun-kissed orange groves. And during mm -hmm. the season, you're smelling these amazing aroma of these oh, blossoms. Yes. Oh, my yes. <laughs> you know, and I, I was just, I was a mountain biker at that time. Mm -hmm. And I was up in the mountains and I, I started to smell these orange blossoms. And I just, I just had this epiphany. It was like a little angel touching me on the shoulder or whispering in my ear. Why don't you start singing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was on Epic Records back in the late, uh, oh gosh. <laughs> anyway, uh -huh. I was singing R&B. Uh, I was doing- Really? Uh, I didn't know this side of yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> I was on Epic, exactly. Uh, 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 if the listeners can go there. Okay. And um, uh, this is going back uh, to my recording days on Epic Records. 
when I sang R and B because I had a, I had lots of bands. I was always in the entertainment business, always in some music mm -hmm. business. I was always a singer. I was a drummer, a percussionist. Mm -hmm. I played all the percussions, but mostly singing from the drum sets. But I'm this agent met me. I was playing at one of the clubs in Union City, New Jersey. He liked my voice, so he introduced me to uh, a relatively powerful man uh, who was connected. And he, in turn, knew uh, two very well-known and up-and-coming writers mm -hmm. in New York, songwriters, called Lindsay and Randell. So he took me up to Epic Records. Mm -hmm. They gave me a couple songs to sing. One was Gary Puckett recorded, uh, Young Girl, Gary Puckett and Uni Gap. Mm -hmm. The other was Fool on a Hill. Uh, which was released by Sergio Mendes in Brazil, 66. Yes. Then they gave me a I couple of other this. tunes mm -hmm. that were written, especially for me. And they heard my voice on these. And I'll give you the hook. You can look on or hear it on YouTube. They gave me the name. They were trying to find a name for me at that time mm -hmm. because at that time, Tom Jones was popular. Yes. B.J. Thomas was yes. popular. Yes, yes. Hooked on a feeling was big. And of course, it's not unusual. Mm -hmm. So they decided to give me a stage name of Palmer Jones. Palmer Jones. And if people put that in to YouTube, Palmer Jones. I'm going to look up great, one of those videos and put a link in here. <laughs> yeah. And the great magic of love. Mm -hmm. And... The B-side was called Dancing Master. That was my first single release on Epic Records. Sweet. After I auditioned for Lindsay and Randell, which I don't believe are still around. They're probably in their 80s, mid 80s. Mm -hmm. But that was real exciting for me. So getting back to the inspiration for my cookbook, I always was a singer. I wanted to learn opera. I wanted to sing arias. I wanted to improve my vocals. I wanted to get instructed by a teacher that could assist me in learning the bel canto method and singing some of these arias that I ended up singing, some of which are on my CD. That's a more CD. Mm -hmm. um, so as I was in Ojai and I, as I had this epiphany and meeting this lady who was actually studying with a vocal coach, and this is back in the end of 1990, okay. that was 88 years young. Her name is Giovanna D'Onofrio. Okay. So she said, well, Andy, Giovanna is not taking any more students. However, I will talk to her because she was studying with Giovanna. She was learning how to sing, whatever, sing her. So she calls me next day, say, Giovanna will see you. So I went down to Giovanna. I was living in Santa Barbara at the time. And I went down to see Giovanna D'Onofrio in Ventura, which is about 20, 30 minutes from Santa Barbara South. And she opened the door and she was very well dressed. And I almost bowed on the floor. I just... <laughs> you <were. Giovanna. laughs> I am so happy to be under your tutelage. I'm so excited. So she, she was very well dressed, 88. Yeah. Wow. She was, you know, very much in her right mind. And mm -hmm. she went, sat behind her grand piano. And I said, Giovanna, I am so excited to be here. She, she said, Andrew, she says, I want to tell you one thing. Excitement and Italian are one word. <laughs> uh, one word. <laughs> so I put that on the back of my first cookbook, Sing and Cook Italian with Andy LaRusso. And then yes. she came to see me when my cookbook came out mm -hmm. after she, I was under her tutelage for almost a year. And I recorded the songs by going back to what my grandma used to play. Oh, Solo Mio, Santa Lucia, Arrivederci Roma, Volare, mm -hmm. uh, Non Ti Scorda Di Me, La Dana Mobili. And I put those all on <clears throat> the CD, which yeah. is now an mp3 file mm -hmm. which at that time was an audio tape yes I so <laughs> the whole thing came together and then i met some producer that i was doing dinner theater because i did a lot of dinner theater in santa barbara when i mm -hmm. lived there yes i was lead 
in a number of different musicals like Funny Girl and Play It Again, Sing, or whatever, a lot of different musicals that were very popular at that time. Um, but so I put all that together. I, then I called my aunts and said, send me some recipes, please. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, grandma never wrote anything down. You could relate to that. Yeah, right? absolutely. She would put it on five by seven cards. And mm -hmm. so my aunt sent me what they have. They were all alive at the time uh, in 91. And I took some of those recipes. I reworked them because she, when grandma Nona Grace would cook, she would make enough for the whole family and plus dozens, you know, a couple dozen eggs and flour. Mm -hmm. So I had to find, refine those recipes, which I did. And I tried them out on some of my friends, which are still alive these days. <laughs> yes. And put those all in the cookbook. So then the musicians came together uh, through the producer, the, the arranger. And Jim Messina, I don't know if you remember Loggins and Messina. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jim Messina had a studio in, uh, I believe it was Carpinteria, California, which again was a little bit further south in Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And I got the engineer who worked with Mike Love in the Beach Boys because we were living together on the property of Mike Love used to own in Santa Barbara. Uh, we were all meditating at the time, uh, TM meditators, and that's how we all connected. And Mike mm. used to have his home there uh, in Santa Barbara, but he had an engineer that was phenomenal. Uh, his name was Jeff. Don't remember his last name. So Jeff did the engineering because I had very little money at the time, and I wanted to hire these musicians. So the arranger got the musicians together. Uh, some of them played mandolin accordion, violin. I wanted to get that old world feeling on some of the music. Mm -hmm. The arranger played not only violin, but he also played piano. He arranged a lot of the things on piano. And we hired a bassist, upright bass fiddle player from the opera, an opera company in Solvang. So here we are with all these musicians. We're going live to tape, right? Right. Uh, without any overdubbing. And it was challenging. The good old days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Live to tape because it was less expensive. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I want to go back and let's do that overdub again. So yes. there's a couple of blunders and blips, but, you know, not too many people. It was really authentic. <laughs> right. Right. So uh, then that came to be um, the audio tape. And then I found the publisher or printer in Florida, where I'm living now in Naples, Florida. I found the publisher uh, printer that would put the audio cassette tape that I recorded. I sent the uh, original master to them. And that would also put the tape, the audio tape on the back of the cookbook, which I think is the one that you have, right? Yes. With the audio tape on yes. it. Yes. Boy, I like to see the data. I must have autographed that for you, Brad. It's yeah, it was like there. in 2006 or 2007, somewhere yeah, right in there. Take a screenshot of that and send it okay. to whatever. But you bet I will. So that's how that happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from that, it was just uh, constantly, uh, you know, promoting uh, and finding out how to market it, book signing in bookstores, mm -hmm. a number of which were in the Santa Barbara, Southern California area, Barnes and Noble, uh, Earthling Books was my first bookstore in Santa Barbara where I would go in, I would cook a couple of recipes or do some appetizers and sing some beautiful songs. And then the books were there and I autographed them. And mm -hmm. it was a wonderful experience. The whole thing really was very nature supported. Uh, and it was showing me, making me, making it very clear that I was on the right path. And, and you know, mm -hmm. we're talking 1991, 92, uh, and then 93. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's just when you're on, when you're doing your right work, when you're on the right path, it's almost like a frictionless flow. Instead of trying to swim upstream, you're floating, you're in a boat going downstream, you know, effortlessly. I'm sure you're going to test to some things like that in your life, right? The challenges. Absolutely. I was just, I was just going to say that I didn't want to yeah. interrupt your flow there, but, but yeah. you know, uh, as a principle, that's what I've had that happen like three times in my life now where you, you start out with something or a goal or and you're chasing it and it feels like this is never going to happen, never going to happen. But you got that right. little 
thought there that says, just keep going, just keep going. Yeah. And you follow that. Yeah. And then when it opens up, like what you're talking about, it's literally, you wake up one morning and people are calling you, people yeah. are, are giving you compliments and people are right. saying, Hey, when's your next thing coming out? And it's like, okay, none of that was happening until today. Yeah. However, if I didn't put all that time and effort into it, none of it would have happened. So, but yeah, I, well, that, that flow. Is, yes. Mm -hmm, that flow. I just, I wished everybody could experience that. I truly do. Yeah. Well, it's some people give up even before that, you know, uh, they don't realize that all I have to do, they're sitting in a dark room as a metaphor and there's a light switch right next to them. <laughs> that, that's good. Can I borrow that? You know? Is that that's from Andy LaRusso. There we yeah. go. <laughs> I like hey, man. that. <laughs> hey, come on. There's a light switch right next to you. You know, turn it on, man. Nice. You know? I like that. Uh, people show up in our life, Brad, and, and I've mm. been very fortunate at this point to have my health. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm challenged now with a, a condition called dysonia, which is a form of mm. uh, blepharospasm. That's why I have my sunglasses on. And it's, it's a neurological challenge that I've had for the last three years. Uh, uh, my eyelids blink incessantly and I can't control the muscles. So I donate a portion of the proceeds of my sauces, which we'll talk about in the next segment to yes. the Sony Medical Research Foundation mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago. They're doing research on dystonia itself, which is a major challenge and disease that people have more so than I do. But uh, when I decided to do this, Brad, I knew there was going to be some challenges along the way. First, the first challenge was, well, how can I afford it all? I mean, here we are, self-publishing a cookbook. Yeah. Hiring musicians. I mean, if I, and I would spend a few hours sitting in the cookbook session, se a section of bookstores. And I would look at all these well published, produced, printed books, full color, and they had I don't know how many pages and from all these, you know, at that time, not that well-known chefs, but now, you know, well, Julia Child, she lived yeah. in Santa Barbara for a while. Mm -hmm. And this was pre-food network, pre-food network. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, if I gave up there and said to myself, nobody's going to want, <laughs> I mean, I never had a cookbook before, you know, I'm an entertainer. I'm a singer. Uh, I have an idea you know, to put music and words to the Italian songs in the cookbook, which I did and published my grandma's recipes. I mean, if I stopped there, I wouldn't be where I am now, Brett. Wow. If I gave up, but I didn't. You didn't. I, had a, I had this feeling, they say in the solar plexus in my gut, yes. that I was onto something that was needed in the world that I needed to fulfill my passion and to give out to the world. Okay. If I gave up, none of this would be, it would be no, talking wow. to me now as a singing chef. I love it. So love to I hear do that. encourage people in their lives when they, when they come across that bridge mm -hmm. and they see maybe the bridge is a little wobbly. All right. But they know they see something on the other side mm -hmm. that they really want. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, it, it does. You're right. Same. It could be whatever it is. They see it. They have a clear vision, okay? Because we manifest in clarity what we think about. Yes. The manifestation, our, our thoughts are very, very powerful. Yes, people need to understand that. And when that. we think those powerful thoughts, and especially if they're life-supporting thoughts, they're not only for our self, selfishness or our ego, but they're also contributing to the world around us. Yeah, you'll find that nature will step in, people will call, things will happen, doors will open when that situation occurs. And then people show up in our life that feed into that, that support that. So the singing and the cooking and the feeding people and to giving them a good time. Now, what I do with my VIP shows and the casinos mm -hmm. and fundraisers which I'm starting to get more bookings, thank God, after the pandemic. Okay. Awesome. That's what we need to do is keep that focus, keep that light shining, turn on that switch in the room. Right. <laughs> you know, and continue on, continue on our path. Don't let nothing, anything. Nothing stand in us. your way. 
Because that, yeah, because yeah, I was going to ask you that. What are uh, can you name maybe some of the roadblocks that you had? So now you've made this decision. You went out there. What was maybe standing in your way that you just said, "No, I'm not going to let this stand in my way. I'm going to keep going." Well, the first thing was, is how do I do it? I mean, how do I publish? How do I publish a cookbook? How do I get these musicians? How do I, how do I afford financially? How to do this? Mm -hmm. There were so many lights along my path, Brad. Yeah. I mean, the lights along my path was number one, meeting this arranger producer to do the music, right? Okay. He knew the people, the musicians. The other light in my path was a self-publisher by the name of Dan Pointer, who had published a self-publishing manual. Okay. He was the one that actually published his first book, one of his bestsellers, with an actual frisbee attached to the book. Well, that's a attention grabber. <laughs> to teach people <laughs> how to have fun with frisbees. That okay. was one of the first claim to fame. He mm -hmm. was in Santa Barbara. I called him. He assisted me for free mm -hmm. on the self-publishing manual, which is probably in its umpteenth publication now. So I got that book and I really read it cover to cover. He talked to me on the phone, didn't charge me. Mm -hmm. uh, that was when just before Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul. I don't know if you remember that. Spoiler Maybe that's story. when we met was during that era. <laughs> uh, the biggest success story in books. Absolutely. Out of Rich Dad, Poor Dad mm -hmm. by Kawasaki and Sharon Lecter. Yes. Huge. Mm -hmm. 30 million, 40 million, whatever. But I was very fortunate to be, those lights were in my path. Walking nice. into a bagel shop, meeting this charming woman, older woman sitting there by herself. I walked in, I, I love bagels, I still do. Yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I love the everything bagel. Uh, toasted. You yeah, know. toasted with cream cheese. <laughs> yeah, amen, yeah, I'm on the same path here. And she was sitting there and I was so excited. And she said, hi, young man, uh, what do you, why are you so happy? I said, well, you know, I'm going to publish a cookbook and, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I got to say, she says, I'll give you some money. Huh? <laughs> All you had to do was ask. <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask her though, but she, she yeah. felt my enthusiasm and she saw that it was something that was going to happen. So I don't know how much she gave, whatever it was. Yeah. But things like that showed up, people like that, situations like that showed up in my life when I thought, how was I going to do this? How was I going to make this happen? And sure enough, uh, it all happened. But I didn't give up, you know, no. and I'm, I'm still not giving up. I'm working every day now. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I've been there. following you on your social media. I'm not a stalker, you know, but I have been following. <laughs> I've been following. I've seen a lot of the events you're doing. And I'm like, man, he is still on. He's still got the pedal to the metal here. He, yeah, You are man. just all over the place. Yeah. So, oh, man, that's fantastic. Well, in wrapping up this uh, this segment here, Andy, you know, people people do have dreams. Do you have any uh, advice? Maybe. I mean, maybe we've already touched on it a little bit about when people get their dream and they think this is what I want to do, what I've noticed with working people over the years is they, they, they feel it in their heart. They feel it throughout their, their whole site, you know, body psyche, whatever. And they think this is something I want to do. And then they go for it. And then they get run into a few challenges or people saying, you can't do that. Who do you think you are? And they quit, but that never, that dream, that desire never leaves. Yeah, still so, there. Yeah. So what, what advice would you have for them to get back up on the horse and get going again? Well, it's very fortunate that we have social media. There's a an app that I'm on probably for the last year and a half. It's an audio app called Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll share that with you because you have to be invited. It's a free app. But I've been very fortunate over the last year to be able to not only listen, because it is an audio app, but be able to meet people through that particular medium that I probably would never, ever be able to meet in my life. It goes on 24-7 mm -hmm. all over the world, people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, uh, people who've written 
multi-million seller books, people who have multi-million dollar real estate, uh, but a lot of them are teachers. It's a free app and they offer this advice. They drop what they call gems to the people who are listening to them in that particular room. They're called rooms. You could choose to go into any room. As long as you have a link to your Instagram account or Twitter account so that when they see your face, they see your profile, they can read your profile and know that you're not a bot that you're somebody that's really serious about whatever it is, publishing a book, building a dynasty, uh, buying real estate, using credit card. I mean, you name the topic. There are people who moderate those rooms mm -hmm. that have been there, done that. They have bought and sold multi-million dollar companies. So I've been very fortunate, Brad, to have that yeah. support. So my, my answer is, go out and find people who have done it, been there, done that, who can give you advice, go out, get a mentor, get a coach if you need it, but find some assistance from people who already done that, that will inspire you to keep with your dream and don't give up. Well said, well said. Well, we're gonna end that segment right here. Andy, this, this uh, first segment here has been phenomenal. Uh, getting back with you, but, but people, yeah, uh, I, and I love the question that you asked. It wasn't when you ran into your challenge, you said, uh, oh, I can't do this. Where am I going to find the money from? It was instantly, how can I? And I love that that phrase. How can I find the money? How can I get the people? How can I get uh, everything I need to make my vision happen? And it's interesting how the doors open up. I love that old saying. I, I don't know if it was Confucius or Buddha, or, but when the, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Amen. So it kind of flows along with that. So guys, just whatever that dream is, start putting it out to the universe. I mean, yes, you're going to have people that are going to make fun of you and say you can't do that. So what? Keep going. You'll find the people who will support you. And this clubhouse thing, I'm going to... I've heard about it. I think I actually signed up for one of the rooms, but then I never pursued it. I, and I keep that keeps coming around. So I better follow up with it. And yeah, I have your number some. and I'll send I'll get on the clubhouse today later on because I go on okay. every day for about an hour and I share things and I learn. Mm -hmm. If you take the word learn, you drop off the L. Earn. You have to Sweet. learn before you earn. Learn before you earn. And this Love is a key it. thing. We have yes. to keep feeding the brain because it's our computer. We keep feeding it, feeding it positive, positive things. And obviously then it will manifest mm -hmm. in light. Nice. All right, everybody, we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk to more, uh, talk a little bit more to our guest here, Andy LaRusso, the singing chef. And I'd like to know a little bit more about your pasta sauces. I didn't know that until I reached out to you last week that you even had that line. Oh, so we're, man, I wish you had uh, it in front of you. I'm ready, baby. I'm ready. So anyway, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. La, 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 Na giornata sole, naria serena, dopo una tempesta, per l'aria fresca, pare già una festa, che bella cosa na giornata e sole. Hello, my friends. This is Brad Newfeld, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Resilience Talk Network. You can listen to my show, Resilience, every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. On my show, we will be discussing what it takes for you to overcome the day-to-day -day challenges that all of us face in life, as well as some of the devastating ones that may lead us to feelings of hopelessness and despair. It's my goal to provide you with the tools and skills that you need to overcome anything that is thrown your way. To find out more about my show, visit our website 
at www.resiliencetalk.com. That's www.resiliencetalk.com. And as always, until we meet again, go for everything that you want in life and make it happen. everybody and we're back uh we're back on resilience talk with brad newfeld my guest today andy larusso the singing chef and if you're just tuning in you've got to go back and listen to the first segment we discussed a lot of things to help you overcome your challenges in life and the mindset that's needed in order to do that uh, but this uh right now what i'd like to talk about andy if it's okay is about here you were you've been a singer you've been uh, a gentleman that goes out and does uh uh, presentations, you've written books. Now you're taking your next step. You have a product line. I love it. Pasta sauces. <laughs> what, is, what, what happened there? Where did you make that decision? And uh, what, tell us about it. Well, you know, I felt it was timing. And, and I think a lot of people can relate to the challenges that come along in their life and what they're going to do for the next step, uh, how they're going to uh, keep making a living, keep supporting their family. Uh, and a lot of this came about, of course, as we know, when the pandemic hit, everybody had a pivot. And if you didn't pivot, mm -hmm. you were just- Yeah, you got left behind. The kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, and when I was able to have an idea, because my work consisted of interacting with people, and during the pandemic, that was taboo. Mm -hmm. So the entertainment value of the casino shows and the fundraiser shows and the special events, that all had the light shut out. It all went dark. And when I moved to Naples in 2020, uh, I wanted to continue sharing my gifts to the world. And I thought, well, you know, I have these recipes that my Nonna from Sicily, which we talked about in the first segment, yeah. uh, used to make for us, you know, Sunday dinners, Wednesday dinners, whenever. And I just loved the memories of watching her cook, you know, all day long mm -hmm. in the kitchen and thinking about the deliciousness of the home cooked meals that we used to sit with the family. So my recent partner, Bill, um, had taken me to a company a number of years ago uh, that was located in Pennsylvania that produced pasta sauces for their family. And they hired me to be their spokesperson as a singing chef during that time for a year to promote their, I guess it was a 25th anniversary. Uh, so revisiting that, Bill was looking for another sponsor for his 100,000 square foot frozen food facility. And he came across this cooker, this other cooker in Pittsburgh that produced a smaller batch of sauces, as opposed to 1,000 kettle gallons, 300 kettle gallons, a smaller, uh, small business producer of sauces. So I thought, well, why don't I get some recipes together? Why don't I send it to them and see how they can reproduce some of these recipes? So I did. They cooked some of the recipes. I said, they sent them back for approval, taste, tweak this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. They told me how much it would cost to produce a certain quantity. And that was a little over two years ago. Okay. And um, then with my marketing skills and my people skills, I started to, you know, do a GoFundMe, which a lot of my friends, especially in California where I was living, supported it. Raising the money, which I didn't really have for the first production of the sauces. And then, of course, printing labels, getting an LLC, 
setting up a new business, uh, learning how to market and promote, which now is a little bit easier because we have the social networks. Yes. So all of that I had to learn, which I'm still learning, business plan, strategy. I was the product, which I still am for the longest yeah, I've, time, I've, Brad, yeah, you know? but now I have a physical yes. product. So that's how that came to be. That's how that uh, product came to be with my pasta sauces, which are called the Singing Chef sauces. Matter of fact, we'll bring up a picture of them product. right now. There, there they are. So you got three, three, one, three of them. Yeah. Okay. Three sauces. Um, one is a vodka cream, which I actually have behind me. This is I had this last night with uh, shrimp. Nice. <laughs> this uh -huh. is one of my best sellers, by the way. Yes. And the newer ones have a QR code on them. This doesn't have it. A QR code on them where people could scan and hear me sing for 20 seconds and see more recipes and get directly linked back to www.singingchef.com. Love website. it. Love it. Could, yeah. So that's 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 the vodka cream. And then, of course, we have a lot of people's favorite, especially for the vegetarians, tomato basil, mm -hmm. lots of fresh basil, all natural ingredients, too, in these sauces. Uh, but I make my lasagna with this, my eggplant parmesan with this. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have a simple pasta with this with some pecorino romano or parmesan reggiano, some fresh basil. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful sauce, a monocotta, just a wonderful sauce for a lot of those things. And my grandma's original, what you used to stand by the so stove, mm -hmm. the sausage and fennel, very small amount of sausage in it, flavored with a little bit of spice to it. Because mm -hmm. she used to use the Italian or the spicy chili peppers you know, to put in the sauce. And this I use in a heavier pasta, like a rigatoni. Okay. Uh, with, uh, again, Pecorino Romano is my favorite uh, uh, cheese, hard cheese. Uh, but this can be used with a number of different recipes, but a, but a heavier and a thicker pasta. So those are my three sons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my three family members <laughs> now at the moment. Nice. Family in a bottle? I don't yeah, know. That's kind of weird. <laughs> grandma in but a they bottle. You open one but up your here, family definitely grandma out of the bottle in your kitchen. Yeah, that's right. But she definitely had an influence on you. For so these are grandma's recipes and yeah, these are, yeah, family? these are wonderful. Oh, they're awesome. But, the, but the, the, the key is now we have social media marketing, which on Instagram, Twitter, I'm on all of the above, Facebook. Um, um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, In, Instagram, well, uh, yeah, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yep. Yeah. But and, and uh, Pinterest. Pinterest. But, uh, mm -hmm. It's time now if, if people have an idea mm -hmm. uh, and they want to be an entrepreneur because the life of an entrepreneur is always you're always busy. You're always marketing. Mm -hmm. because really it's not as much as who you know, it's who knows you. I like that. I like in that. In the marketing. Mm -hmm. And another gem is the best known mm -hmm. always beats the best. So there's another gem. I love that. So with the marketing now aspect that we have available to us, you can be unstoppable, absolutely yes. unstoppable. And winning is the only solution. Winning is everything. Well, and there's still money involved that's needed yeah. sometimes to get the uh, to get the message out, but it's nothing like before with direct no. marketing where you had to come up with tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to get commercials on radio and TV. Right. Or now, if you take your time and get your pictures and everything, you can put that up there. Right. I mean, for no cost. And YouTube, so. can you imagine? I forgot what the numbers were, but YouTube is the largest uh, mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. in the world to support. Of course, you buy ads eventually, yes. things like that, to support the marketing of whatever it is that you have to market. Yeah. Now, Instagram, and they're all competing with each other. Instagram has what's called reels, very short and sweet, 15 second, 20 second reels. Of which I just found out about last week, Wednesday. <laughs> that you can absolutely have millions of eyeballs 
millions all over the world, even when you're sleeping, looking at whatever it is that you're doing, whether yeah. it's dancing on your head or cooking a sauce or creating something of value, because that's the key. You want to create yeah. something of value. Now, during the pandemic, of course, and even now uh, in this time anyway, where the economy is a little bit shaky, uh, people are looking for opportunities to take care of their family with less expenditure of money, financing, fi financials. So they're looking for things that save them time, okay? Save them time, save them money. And they could still have a wholesome meal at home with their family because there's sometimes now, as you know, Brad, there's a two family income earner. Mm -hmm. Wife is working, husband's working, kids yeah. are in school to come home. Yeah. What, what are you gonna make for dinner? Mm -hmm. But the idea of going into a supermarket and now having pre-made meals that which we have in this, I'm in hundred and food city stores, 130 food city stores in Virginia, Tennessee, Georgia, and Kentucky, which is a family owned store chain. I know the owners, I've been down there in Virginia, mm -hmm. Bristol, Virginia, doing a fun, uh, doing a, a sing and cook demonstration in the store, in their community room. Mm -hmm. uh, and they just released a short, what's called shortcut meals using my sauces in two of the meals, a shrimp and the penne pasta with the vodka cream. And for the vegetarians, a gnocchi, which is like a potato puff mm -hmm. uh, pasta with vegetables and using my tomato basil. But people want to come in, they want, you know, $5.99, $10 for two, save some money, have a good meal, make a salad, get an extra jar of my singing chef sauces. And, uh, you know, have that as a quick and easy meal that's nourishing, too, for their family and good. Mm -hmm. so, so that's how that came to be. That's nice. Much. And, you know, so continuing to market. So anybody can do repeat what you or do what you just talked about, about as far as launching a line, if they just take the time to uh, to make it work. And just again, ask for help. I, I like that part yes. too. Sometimes we have to, like with your GoFundMe. You yeah, ask for it. yeah. Do the research or whatever the product is. I mean, there's mm -hmm. okay, you know, we have Paul Newman sitting on the shelf, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I personally don't think Paul Newman ever cooked the sauce. No, 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 I don't no, know. no, no, you know, no. I, yeah, I, he, yeah. I, I, I know he didn't have an Italian grandma. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. But the, what he did have is support, of course, financially, mm -hmm. uh, in the marketing of his products and the giving back yeah. to the fundraisers and the uh, places that he wanted to support and his organization still support to this day. Mm -hmm. So with me, finding an organization in Chicago called the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation, mm -hmm. Uh, which I connected with and I told them I was going to produce a line of pasta sauces and I would like to give back mm -hmm. to the research foundation on studying and researching dystonia, which is a neurological challenge that a lot of people have. It's under the radar. Yeah, I I'd never heard about it until now. And so, yeah, uh, a small yeah. part of that, that affects my eyelids. It's a, it's a neurological challenge and mm -hmm. I'm dealing with it as best as I can, no. but there are other people out there that are really, really racked with, uh, spasms, mm -hmm. uh, inability to really talk for a long time, walk for a long time. So yeah. anyway, so it's a giving back part of it. it's tithing, as we learn probably from our churches and our churches Bible. and stuff. Yes. So it's tithing. It's giving back as much as we can when we can. So I thought, you know, with my sauces, I can give back something uh, to last and have that legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, but research, 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 doing as much research as possible, whatever the product is, finding a coach, mm -hmm. finding a mentor, finding people who have been there and done that. I mean, the pasta sauce business is a billion dollar industry as well as pasta is. Well, I love it. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you have a special recipe that you enjoy or that? Cause I know you told me your son's starting to cook now. Yeah. And he's, yeah, he, he's, awesome. he's cooked a lot of different things. And I, I want to let the audience know that Andy, when we had our very first interview back in 2006 or seven, I'll have to research it when it was, 
I, I brought my son on who was 10 years old at the time and, and you helped him a lot, Andy. He was so excited because he, <laughs> at the time I would come home every evening and he'd have like three dishes out where he would, he had cooked up like shrimp or something. And he had it in three different tastes or three different spices. It te- taste these dad and tell me which ones that you, you <laughs> like. And when I told him about you, I says, we're going to be on the thing. He was so uh, excited about that. He remembers that to this day and it's helped him well, a lot he was in his 10 life. Years old, huh? Yeah, he's 10 years old. Oh my so I want to thank you for that, for the influence you had on him, because oh, he man. he just excited. And but yeah, I was telling uh, Andy about uh, just prior to the show about this uh, French onion soup that he had made. Mm. <laughs> he said he worked on it all day long and it was moi. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that sounds it so wonderful. But yeah, yeah. You, you never know where you're going to get inspiration from. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I knew. And I get feedback from people. I have a, a Google review. It's a five-star Google review that after mm-hmm. people taste my sauces, I send them the link. Mm-hmm. And they just lay it out. Oh, Andy, this is one some of the best store-bought jarred sauces I've ever had. Uh, my wife, my son, mm-hmm. my husband, whatever, you know, really enjoyed it. Uh, can you have share more recipes, which are on my website, singingchef.com? Uh, there's a pairing. Mm-hmm. Uh, foods with some of my sauces, uh, Mm -hmm. with the three sauces. Uh, So you never know who you're going to influence along, you know, along your journey, because it it, it is basically a journey (laughs) that we're on, you know. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Enjoy Uh, the journey. We reach out to other people and we share our gifts. And that's that's the only thing I could say, Brad, is, Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Tony Bennett. He's still singing. I mean, he has a little pro- challenge with his Alzheimer's, but his son is working the business. Of course, his lovely wife yeah. uh, helps helps him out tremendously. Uh, you know, people like that in the entertainment industry get so much love and so much affection mm-hmm. from the people they've influenced. So, of course, he's been an artist for many, many years, studied traditional art. You knew that, right? Yes, I do. Yes. He has paintings and stuff that mm-hmm. I'm sure are going to be worth a small fortune. Yeah. Uh, with his legacy. Uh, but, you know, it's never giving up on what it is that you feel you have to offer to the world. Uh, and, and with these sauces, we, my company now is called sing and cook foods, LLC. Okay. Uh, eventually we want to not only scale, we're working with a company in Minnesota. Now uh, it's, it's a store chain, just like food city privately owned called Lunds L U N D S in Burleys, B-R-Y-L-E-S, something like that. Okay. That are interested in having my sauces there. It's a premium store because mm-hmm. my sauces are premium sauces. Yes. But, um, you know, so we like to roll out uh, in there, but also building up my e-commerce site, singingchefsauces.com, where as we were on a break, somebody emailed me, where they can get the sauces. And I immediately told them that they can get it delivered direct within two or three days yep. maximum, you know, to, to their home. Yes. Um, and their gift packs there, you know, for the holidays, especially the season coming up people mm-hmm. gifts. So you have, I have a, actually, I don't have it in hand, but I have a gift crate that the sauces actually. Yeah. I with. saw the picture of it on online. Yeah. There. That people. And then I have, a VIP gift crate, uh, some of the books I have left and maybe a few of the CDs, I'm all, almost all out of CDs. Mm-hmm. They can get a corporate a gift pack for the VIPs. Of, uh, corporate People love to send gift packs. And eventually, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully maybe we'll have wines, we'll have mm-hmm. olive oils, we'll have some more interesting recipes, Mediterranean style, some gluten-free possibly because I'm I know supposed that's a, to eat gluten free, but I I don't stick to it. <laughs> I love my gluten, Andy. Don't yeah. don't make me give it up. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what. Man. But uh, yeah, I just had some pappardelle mm-hmm. um, with my tomato basil, and I used the uh, turkey meatballs actually with the nice. pecorino romano. So pappardelle, mm-hmm. which is the ribbon, long ribbon pastas. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's you know that that to me right now is really front and center stage for me and then getting more of my casino Mm -hmm. uh, performances, which they can always check into my website, singingchef.com, see where I'm performing, what day. Let's give that again. Cause again, if you want to see Andy live, you won't regret it. It's a wonderful experience. I've got, I I got to see you live there and man, the energy you bring to the room and 
and it's just phenomenal. So, yeah, so where can people www.singingchef.com Mm-hmm. You will also see videos of me on my Andy LaRusso video YouTube page. Mm-hmm. Um, again, one of the lights along the way of my road was I was able to um, meet the Osmonds, as you know, are very, yeah, very They're here just 40 miles south of me here. Entertainment family. Yes. And working with the Osmonds on their show... And having my first cookbook, I was on the road traveling. I got a call from one of the segment producers, which were working with Donnie Murray and Dick Clark, who was one of the executive producers of that show, for those of us who were around then, uh, Mm -hmm. when Dick Clark was around. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they asked me, they said they heard of me. They knew I was a singing chef. And would I be interested in doing a segment with the Osmonds? I said, of course, you know. And I was living in Santa Barbara at the time. And the studio was in, uh, the Sony studios were in, uh, I believe, Burbank. So I went down there, met Donnie Mary Osmond. But prior to that, they called me up. Uh, the uh, segment producer said, well, what can we sing? Can you sing one of the Italian songs? I said, well, look, I have an idea. Let me call you back. So I had this idea. I picked up the cookbook. And I went to a recipe that was relatively simple to sing. Mm-hmm. The ingredients too. Okay. <laughs> so I started to sing it to myself, the recipe for my grandmother's ricotta cheesecake. Okay. <laughs> Six eggs, vanilla, a cup of sugar, please. A half a cup of flour and fresh ricotta cheese. But don't forget the chocolate chips, the chocolate chips, the chocolate chips. Mix it all and bake. And there you have ricotta cake. Sung to the tune yes. of Funiculi Funicula. Nice. <laughs> so I called them back and they loved it. And of course, yeah. they're entertainment. And I went down, I did two segments. The third segment didn't air. We were going to do sing, we, we did sing and cook Italian, sing and cook Mexicana, and we were going to do sing and cook French. But sing and cook Italian was so successful. Uh, it, this is all pre food network. Yes that I was able to really start and kickstart my book, mm-hmm. Sing and Cook with Andy LaRusso, mm-hmm. that had the audio tape, because that you'll see the video again on Andy LaRusso videos okay. and also my website, singingchef.com yes. with Donnie Marie Osmond. You search for the video and see the fun we had. And that is one of the segments that I end my VIP dinner show with at the casinos and fundraisers, where I'll bring two or three, uh, we I'll bring two or four VIPs up on stage and we dump and pour the ricotta cake and then we dump and pour the polenta and everybody's singing the song with me, mm-hmm. sing and cook Italian with the singing chef. So that's how that came to be. And that really uh, kickstarted uh, my notoriety. Remember we said before, it's, it, you know, it's not, uh, you know, who you know, it's who knows you. Who knows you. I love that. Yeah, it's it's the marketing of it. Mm-hmm. So that really helped me. Uh, and that's what I'm going to or, or continuing to do and, and, and doing now with scaling my pasta sauces mm-hmm. uh, as much as possible. Get them in the supermarkets where people can buy them mm-hmm. uh, or online at the e-commerce site, singingchefsauces.com so people can try them and suggest them to their family and friends. Absolutely. Well, and we want to do whatever we can here at the Resilience Talk Network, Andy, to promote this where you're doing such, where a portion of the proceeds go to help such a great cause. Again, say that uh, one more thing, the the challenge with the eyes. What is that? Well, it's called the Blafaro, Blafaro spasm. Okay. And Blafaro spasm is a neurological challenge. It starts from the basal ganglia. And it's hard if you see a person blinking a lot. And it, it, it's sometimes it's worse than others. I'm not supposed to drink caffeine, but I do. I love my cappuccino yes. <laughs> and espresso. Anything that interrupts the neurology of the system, uh, not getting enough sleep. Thank God that I do. I meditate. Thank God that helps me out a lot. Uh, stress uh, can uh, instigate it, you know, but uh, yeah, it's, and, and a number of people have it after you do research on it and find out, you see videos of people that are just, they can't keep their eyes open. Mm-hmm. There's so much neurological activity 
No. Uh, but Estonia is is under the radar at the moment, uh, and they're publicly funded most of the time, and they have board of directors. They have research, research, research from all over the world, trying to find what causes this neurological challenge or disease in people. Hmm. So they can look it up. Uh, they can see okay. on YouTube. They can see Estonia, and they can look up certain aspects of Estonia and who has it. Fantastic. So, yeah. It's tithing. It's giving back. You bet. So yes, everybody, get on there. Uh, I'm going to order my sauces as soon as we get off oh, of here. Right. <laughs> uh, so I, I will have them coming my way. I can't wait to can't wait to try them. Matter of fact, I'll have to give you a shout out and let you know how uh, my experience with them, and I'll do that for sure. <laughs> yeah, send some photos along, and I'll put them up on my uh, social. You bet. Let's do it. All right. Well, and uh, any last uh, final thoughts, Andy, for uh, for the people out here in the audience. Well, you know, since this is a resilient uh, topic, don't give up. Never um, give up. Never give up on your dream. Uh, keep your health because health is wealth. Ask for advice uh, for people from people who've been there, done that. Get involved with groups. Get a coach. Get a mentor. Um, create a plan. Create a plan for yourself course it's all god's plans i remember that mm -hmm. saying if you want to make god laugh tell him your plans right <laughs> those things do come up in yes, our life do. yes they do that take us off the path or whatever we're think on we're think our path yeah because it's not really our path it's god's path that's what i believe but anyway yeah, what he has for us i do too yeah so for us anyway to to really the people in the world to help us you know get a group of people that support you that assist you and that believe in your dreams and that feed you motivation uh and that you can really share your ideas with in this case uh, your business ideas uh, as i started with my singing chef sauces business because i reached out i reached out to a lot of people and i'm still reaching out and i'm still learning you never stop learning yes <laughs> you never stop learning and Absolutely. Uh, so i really I really encourage people to do that because even in, if it's cloudy, I just saw the sun beam out out of these uh, windows uh, windows that I have here mm -hmm. in Naples, Florida. The sun just came out and uh, I knew it was going to come out. Hey, it's in Florida too, you know? Yeah, exactly. But, uh, <laughs> the sun was eventually going to come out and just beam away. It's just like things come up in our life that may mm -hmm. be challenging and metaphorically they're like clouds. Hey, mm -hmm. the clouds are going to go away, man. Yeah, they are. The sun is shining. They come and go, but this, the sun is always there shining. Right. Fantastic. Well said. Well said. Thank <laughs> you, my friend. Thank you so much. Hey, it's so good to hook up with you again, Andy, and uh, appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thanks so much, Brent. I'm excited right. to see some uh, recipes that you create with my sauces. Oh, you bet. Uh, I mean, I'm going to oh, share them. <laughs> That's right. All right, everybody. Andy LaRusso, the Singing Chef. Be sure and check him out at his website. It's singingchef.com. That's singingchef.com. But I'm going to be right back to wrap things up. Anyway, thank you again, Andy, and we'll see you right after this break. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's amore. Bells will ring, ting-a-ling-a-ling, ting-a-ling-a-ling, and you'll sing Vita Bella. Do you know someone who's gambling with death due to an addiction? Do you know someone whose life is being turned upside down due to a loved one that's battling with addiction? Hi, I'm Al Richards. I am the host of the Other Side of Addiction podcast. I started the podcast due to my wife's battle with alcohol. Let's just say I became addicted to her addiction. Our podcast is helping people understand a little more about those who have battled addiction and those who are hurting from their addiction. Through raw vulnerability, we share stories that help uncover the root causes of addiction. Shame felt on both sides, matter of the conscious and subconscious mind, continued beliefs and often confusing paths of recovery. We collaborate with real people and their stories as well as licensed professionals to help our audience gain a better understanding of addiction. You can find us on Resilience Talk Network, 
You can also find us on Facebook at Mr. Al Richards. That's Facebook at Mr. Al Richards. You can also find us on YouTube. Just look up the Other Side of Addiction podcast. everybody well there you have it my interview with the singing chef mr andy larusso i hope you learned a lot from from this episode i just want to take just a couple of minutes and, and review some of the things that we discussed here today when i don't know if you noticed this that everything started with humble beginnings here with andy and you're going to find that out with just about everybody out there that you see that's either famous or successful in any industry uh that they're they're pursuing most people think, well, I didn't get born with money. I My parents weren't that wealthy. We didn't have a whole lot of stuff. So I just can't join that fray of people. And that's a bunch of bull honky or uh, what was it that Colonel Potter used to say, horse hockey. Uh, anyway, that was uh, ma my mash days. But anyway, <laughs> uh, don't let that stop you from chasing your dreams. As you noticed here with Andy, what did he do? He had his dream. He had his vision. He knew what he wanted. He went out there. He put it out to the universe. Here's what I'm doing, and here's why. And you'll be surprised the people that you will have come into your life that will help you supply or help you obtain the resources that you need in order to make that happen. Uh, Res Resilience Talk Network uh, started in humble beginnings as well. Matter of fact, over the next several weeks, I'm going to be releasing a, a chain or a, not a chain, but a series of podcasts telling you a little bit about my history, starting working full time at age 13 to support myself. And I, again, I'm telling you this for the sheer purpose of helping you to understand that you need resilience. It's all about being able to get through those challenges that you have to start looking at them in a different way. Don't look at them as their punishments or anything like that. They're all learning opportunities. Anyway, I, uh, I want you to definitely tune into those podcasts as I release them over the next couple of weeks. But one of the key elements here that I liked what Andy said, and I did refer to it in the first segment, is when there's something you're going after, ask, don't say, what can I do? Or or why aren't things happening to me? Ask that question, how can I? Those three words are very powerful. How can I? How can I find the resources I need to do this? And a lot of times it doesn't take money. I, that's why I use the word resources. Sometimes it's a person that comes into your life that will assist you with the thing that you're needing. You know, they may have the resource that you need, but again, unless you put it out to the universe, nothing's gonna happen. So take the time to think about it. If you've let, given up on your dreams, it's time now to revisit them. The world needs your talents, your skills. It needs the resources that you can provide because not only does it bless your family, it blesses the lives of other families as well. And that's another theme that you saw here with Andy. Look at all the people he's helping by his ideas and putting them out there, uh, especially with his new line of pasta sauces here where a portion of the proceeds goes to to uh, support a great cause. And you could be doing the same thing. I know people's hearts are good. The majority of the people out there, and I'm not talking 80% or 85%, 99% of the people out there have good hearts. They want to do good things in this world, but we just have all of this chaos that's going on that's stopping us from doing and following that dream and that vision that we have inside of us. Well, it's time to bring that out. So, and wrapping up this show here, again, I want you to click on all of the links here at the bottom. Visit thesingingchef.com as well as his other, uh, his, his other links that he has on there. And also, uh, order your pasta sauces today. I was very serious when I said that in the last segment. Uh, we're going to support causes like this. If you have any good causes that can, that can help mankind, we bring them here. Let's talk. 
You can give me a call, reach out to me at area code 435-830-6945. That's 435-830-6945. Or you can email me at info at resiliencetalk.com, resilience, excuse me, info at resiliencetalk.com. Visit our website. And if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, please leave us a comment. Uh, please leave us a like. And if you're on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button with the little bell there. And we'll let you know when we have any more of these inspirational videos that are coming out. We're posting them all the time in different variations and different uh, challenges that people face every day. And if you want to overcome the challenges that you're faced with, find somebody, as Andy said, somebody who's already been there, done that, that's conquered their challenge and been able to pass those that advice or those inspirations on to you to help you get over that challenge that you're faced with as well. But everybody, thank you so much for being on here today. I, I can't express enough the love I have for everybody out there, and I want to help anybody to, in the best, you know, as much as I can. So anyway, uh, everybody, take care of yourselves. And until we meet again, go for everything that you want in life and make it happen.